tell you guys what, living down here in Arizona in the winter time is an actual cheat code. It is 75, it is sunny, there's not a cloud in the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. Now we're headed off to Koenigsegg Scottsdale today to go pick up the Agera and I have to pay the most expensive repair bill of my life. Now the majority of this work was for my VMAX attempt in Florida and all of this work was done before my VMAX attempt in Florida. So that kind of sort of skews the numbers ever so slightly. Unfortunately, we have to pay the invoice today, so RIP. Now when we were in Florida, we had three goals. Have fun, had a ton of fun. Don't die. I'm still here and go really 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 fast now 224 miles an hour is fairly fast But it's not that impressive and unfortunately there's one reason and there's one person to blame as to why we didn't go faster and uh, To summarize it I'm an idiot. Now, when we were in Florida, we had four passes. 207, which was the warm-up, 217, which was kind of like the warm-up after the warm-up, 220, and 224. And that final pass was really my only attempt at VMAX. Now, before this top speed pass, I had been talking to Koenigsegg directly. And I was told specifically, don't use launch control. You want to reduce the amount of heat buildup to achieve top speed and to shift at 6,800 RPMs. And that's a very key detail. Don't go to redline, 6,800 RPMs. That's peak power. As I mentioned, we're not using launch control out of the gate. Right around 30 miles, an hours where I actually pin it zero to 60 in a staggering eight seconds. Now my eyes, I got the draggy on the windshield, I'm wearing a full racing helmet, and I have a POV GoPro attached to the helmet. Now the speedometer and the tachometer on the car's instrument cluster, I gotta pay attention to the tachometer so I know when to change gears at 6800 RPMs. So my eyes, draggy, tachometer, draggy, tachometer. I'm trying to stay alive as well, I'm not a professional driver, it's hot, it's humid, I'm nervous, I'm stressed out of my mind, I'm making sure all the cameras are operating, everything's working, I'm trying to film, there's a lot going on. Now we hit 200 miles an hour, we're sitting in sixth gear, and we're climbing fast. Eyes on the draggy, eyes on the tachometer, draggy, tachometer, draggy, tachometer. 200, 201, 202, 203, 204, 205, I can barely keep up. 208, 209, 210, 211, 212, 213, 214, 215, and 216. Then we lose speed, we actually drop in speed. 214, 215, 216, we lost all momentum. 218, 219, 220, 221, 222, 223, and 224, draggy indicated 224, speedometer indicated 227. Now I noticed this hiccup, and I'm thinking heat soaking, maybe there's a fueling issue, and then I went back, I watched the footage, and here's what happened. Now on the Koenigsegg Agera, the speedometer and the tachometer, they actually share the same gauge. Now the speedometer is that traditional needle, whereas the tachometer is a blue light that lights up progressively around the speedometer dial as you get closer and closer to redline. I actually wanna share with you guys the GoPro POV footage because that tells the entire story. The drag just shows we lost speed. Now unfortunately in sixth gear at 215 miles an hour, the speedometer needle sits right at 6600 RPMs. Now in this moment where I'm going incredibly fast, I got the two confused. I saw the speedometer at 215 miles an hour. I thought that was the tachometer at 6600 RPMs. I thought I had 200 more RPMs to climb to reach peak power, but in fact, I was actually at 7000 RPMs. I bounced off the rev limiter, bounced off the rev limiter, finally changed gears, and I messed up. And that's why the car bogged down. It wasn't the car's fault whatsoever. It was driver error. I messed I messed up. I got the speedometer and the tachometer Confused. Had that not happened, I think I would have gone between 230, 235 miles an hour. I guess we'll never know. But on that bombshell, that beautiful bombshell, that sad bombshell, I'm excited to announce today's video has been sponsored by Vessi. Now, most of you guys have known for quite a while, I love my Vessi sneakers. They are versatile, they're stylish, they're comfortable, and most importantly, especially this summer when we're up to all sorts of crazy activities, unexpected weather events, they are 100% waterproof and if you don't believe me we're gonna do a little bit of science right now and i'm gonna show you guys the method and the madness behind the vessi so right here in the pool we are gonna dip our feet in no big deal get them nice and wet and you'll see when i take the shoes off they are 100% dry look at my sock 100% dry i love these vessies they are a game changer and you are gonna love them too and vessi has all sorts of different colors and styles different shoes for different situations and different lifestyles i love my vessi weekend sneakers when i'm walking around the city and i love the vessi stormburst when i'm walking oscar or when i'm hiking and this summer you car guys just like me every other weekend you're gonna be washing your car stay cool and dry with Vessi. Now, if you've never worn a pair of Vessis, this is the time. Elevate your summer activities with Vessi's new Storm Bursts and Weekend Shoes. Discover more at Vessi.com slash Stradman or check out the link in the description below. And using that link, guys, you can get 15% off your first purchase of Vessis at checkout. This summer, stay cool and dry with Vessi. <laughs> it's just got 
Now in the last video, I upset a ton of you guys because I sold my beautiful famed Jeep Regini. Okay, maybe that's not why. I sold the A12 super fast and I bought the Lotus Amira and I told you guys that I traded in the A12 on the Lotus Amira. That was not a one-to-one -one trade, okay? There's more to that deal. There's another car that's inbound that's gonna be here this weekend, so trust the process. Trust, I, I know I always say that, but like this time, actually trust the process. Welcome to Koenigsegg Scottsdale. Well, I have to give a massive shout out to the entire team here at McLaren and Koenigsegg Scottsdale. The Agera HH is back, fully serviced, and ready to roll. It has been way too long. The last time I sat in this car, I was going 224 miles an hour and bouncing off the rev limiter. Don't worry, we're gonna come back for the event on Roadster momentarily sometime this afternoon. But right now, we are on absolute empty. Now the key in the coding seg is right at 5,000. There it is! Every single time on the upshift. <laughs> got a 675 LT right there with a roof scoop. I tell you what, those are like the coolest McLarens outside of the P1. Bro, I love the car. Thank you. That is beautiful. Arizona is so crazy. There are cars everywhere. We got the satin green McLaren GT. That color is not coming across on camera. That is so much more vibrant. It's actually like tripping out my camera right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> For science. For scientific purposes, we gotta warm up the coding seg. We gotta heat up the final because we're gonna unwrap this baby today. We're going back to Monterey Blue. Well, we gotta do one final pass on the Koenigsegg. Enjoy this view of the only fully pink Koenigsegg in the entire world. Now, the Arizona weather is coming in absolute clutch. If we were in Utah trying to unwrap this car right now, where it is currently 37 degrees, overcast, and absolutely dreadful, it would be a complete disaster. 75 sunny, a lot of sun. The vinyl is just gonna bake and it's gonna peel off like butter. Smooth as butter. I already got us a little bit of a head start, and you can see this vinyl is gonna be no big deal whatsoever. Really such mixed emotions when you unwrap a car because it's so refreshing to see a new color doesn't know what the color is but it also means the end of an ear i can legit feel my skin burning it is so hot i get this utah baby skin it's still not quite too late to change our mind we could kind of just leave it sort of like a loft ferrari with the black roof and the pink underbelly nah oh my goodness look at that blue though this blue is one of the best blues of all time it's monterey blue now i don't know if it's the exact same color code as lamborghini monterey blue but it has the same name so i'm assuming it probably is Look at that. Yes! The car has an entire different personality as blue. That's so sick! Now it does have satin PPF on it right now, so it's actually like a satin Monterey blue. Eventually we'll unwrap that, but we'll rock the satin blue for a while. Monterey blue. Wow, I see how it is. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. One of my neighbors just said he likes the blue more. The pink's not for everybody, but it was, it was, I think the blue is probably better, it is. I haven't even posted the video and I can already see all the comments telling me how much better the Monterey blue is and you're not wrong. This blue is absolutely sensational. When it comes to unwrapping the car, there's a lot of theory, a lot of technique, but basically it's as simple as that. Smooth as butter, baby. The car looks absolutely sensational. I mean, there's something about the state of Arizona, like the, the, the paint matches the sky here. Now the HH badge is missing. I'm gonna get that installed momentarily. And also, yes, we got a little bit of pink vinyl right there. I gotta remove the hard top. I gotta give a massive shout out to my homie Clayton at Summit Auto Lab. Absolutely killed the wrap. And that was also the easiest wrap I've ever uninstalled in my entire life. That took me under two hours and it is spick and span. This car in the blue, oh. It feels like 2015 Gumball 3000 Lewis Hamilton. Obviously it's got the satin PPF. We gotta peel that off. We'll do that soon, but not that soon because Clayton's in Utah and the car's in Arizona, so sometime soon. We got Bell 40 squatting down to getting all the angles. It's like a brand new car. It is like a brand new car. It is completely refreshed. It's unbelievable how a simple color change and present new angles on a car. But you were a professional here. You Who said I was a professional? Nobody you're, in the history of the world has ever called me a professional except myself sarcastically. You're unwrapping cars once a week. You can't you can't finish the job. I gotta remove the hard top. I just I'm gonna do that. We are gonna take this hard. You know what? We're gonna take it off right now. My hands are sweating right now. Easy. Look at that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This guy, Max Bell 40, comes from inside his air conditioned house, hey. walks around the coding. He's like, I've been out here laboring for hours and hours on end, and you're picking and pulling apart the car than the job I did. James, like they say, 
You gotta do it right or don't do it at all. I see a little more paint. I have to remove the radar to do it. I can't get it out, so it's just gotta sit there, just kind of, well, there you go. A little bit better. I, hey, listen, improvements. Just needed a little bit of elbow grease. There's still, there's still vinyl over there. <laughs> this back bumper, I thought it was painted black, it's actually carbon fiber. This is vinyl right here. So we gotta peel this off some. We gotta find a seam. This is carbon fiber. So crazy how I never knew how this back bumper was actually wrapped black. Look at that carbon fiber. That is just glistening. Wow, that is that. absolutely beautiful. Where were you for the last two hours? Well, you know, I figured, listen, Jamie, you've been saying recently that you're you're putting on a little weight. Whoa, oh, listen, what? Listen. What? What? Where did that come from? The fat jokes are flying. I was not expecting a our fat friend, joke right our now. Friend Nick Burlacker. Yeah, used to be our friend Nick on Burlacker. The one way, and so I figured I was watching you out here struggle, and I figured if he's burning calories, <laughs> oh my god, it's a good thing. So wow. You know, hey, get the work, son. Gotta watch. From a distance. Wow. Always have the spare tire. Well, the moment you guys have all been waiting for, the service invoice on my Koenigsegg Agera. Now, we did everything on this car. All of our bases were covered because obviously I was shipping the car to Florida for a top speed event. Safety was of the utmost importance, so anything and everything that the car needed, it got done, and it is very expensive. By far and away, the most expensive service invoice of any car I've ever owned in my entire life by law. Now, on the service invoice from Koenigsegg of Scottsdale, there's a line item for shipping the car from Arizona to Florida and then back to Arizona. It was $11,000 and I know that number is out of control and it is out of control. It was very last minute. The trucker actually stayed in Florida, picked up the car immediately after the top speed event and brought it straight back to Arizona. So I paid a little bit of a price premium for that service. But then also the big issue that I discovered with a Koenigsegg, the car's value is so high. Finding a trucker that has the insurance requirements to cover a Koenigsegg in the event of an accident is almost next to impossible. And the other thing that I discovered is a lot of hypercar owners, they just kind of sort of risk it for the biscuit. I don't really want to do that because obviously I'm leasing the car. I can't risk it for the biscuit. So $11,000 to get the car from here to Florida and back. Now, when I bought the Agera, I knew the car was due for its full annual service. So this number is not a huge surprise. I was fully expecting it, but the annual service parts and labor, $17,914.96. That of course includes like an oil change, spark plugs, coolant flush. Put the service invoice on the screen right here. I got to blur out a bunch of information. I said I was going to break it down line by line, but it's kind of sort of boring. Now, a lot of the items I'm going to mention right now were not necessarily necessary per se, but for top speed, they were kind of sort of necessary. So I signed off on all of them. The fuel pump got replaced. That was six thousand three hundred and seventy eight dollars obviously I wanted the car to perform at optimal performance uh, the rear wing had to be reworked it had to be adjusted that was twenty eight hundred and seventy eight dollars the seal on the roof I didn't want the roof to go flying off also aerodynamically it was very important that the roof was sealed off correctly twenty one hundred and seventy dollars and then the front control arm was also rebuilt uh, twenty three hundred and fifty dollars I also have to clarify real quick the numbers I just mentioned that was purely just the parts the labor was seven thousand two hundred and ten dollars another item that I got done that wasn't necessarily necessary was replacing all four tires. The tires I had on the car, I still have those. I'm going to remount them on the Koenigsegg eventually, but I wanted to have fresh rubber for going VMAX. That seemed like one of the most important things to do possible. Now the front tires were $1,065 and the rear tires were $1,818. And then the last thing I got done on the car, which also seemed to be very, very important for top speed, I got an alignment for $1,050. And I also got to mention there was $16 for miscellaneous fees. Now there was $11,000 for shipping. There was labor grand total $19,100 and $10. Parts grand total $24,077.08. Shop supplies total $189.95. Sales tax to the beautiful state of Arizona $1,953.49. Now the grand total on the Koenigsegg drum roll $58,002.70. And 70 cents. So I guess in summary, I am fairly disappointed. I only went 224 miles an hour. There was a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money invested getting the car from here to Florida, getting it back, getting the car serviced, getting the car safe. Obviously getting the car on the Kennedy Space Center runway to actually do the event was not an easy challenge either. But massive shout out to Koenigsegg of Scottsdale. I cannot thank Ralph and his entire team for everything, getting this car in tip top shape. And the silver lining is we live to fight another day. And on that bombshell, today's video is over. All right, Scottsdale's finally coming in clutch. We got the green SVJ coupe on the wheels, no less. Belfortia approves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love this car. <laughs> God bless Lamborghini, the thunderous boom clap.